What is going on, Center City Church? You already know. You already know. Welcome to our podcast where we spend a couple minutes diving a little deeper into Sunday's message. Yeah. This week, APEST. Yes. What does that word even mean? Well, uh, week two <laughs> of the Move series, and we're focused on giftings. We spend mm-hmm. a little bit of time talking through this picture of what it means to be the church and mm-hmm. how God has uniquely equipped us according to Ephesians 4. Yeah. I think it's funny. I mean, we will get to a pest, but that's one of those terms that we throw around a lot yeah. as a team that a lot of times people just look right back at me and they're like, what? Are you talking about a gorilla? Like, <laughs> <laughs> But now you know. Yeah, so uh, Ephesians 4, we see... Uh, The scripture speaks of how God has gifted uh, the church with the gifts of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. So that's where we see the Mm -hmm. picture of Apest. And that is all one person with all of those five giftings that's super blessed, right? Well, I mean, that's the way that we painted the picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say the first several thousand years of the church, um, really, you've seen that, that picture morph. I do believe that at the beginning of it all, um, that each of those gifts were present and living and vibrant in church communities. And then somewhere along the w- way, we have professionalized the giftings. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we see historically is, well, the person who is the most gifted in these areas must be the person that we deem as pastor or priest or whatever other term you want to kind of throw around. And then everybody else is just kind of, I don't know, receiver of these giftings Mm -hmm. uh, or the product of these giftings versus what I believe is a little bit more of a a biblical perspective is that the gift of the apostle, that apostolic leaning, um, maybe a a word we would use today is just someone who's uh, an idea person Mm -hmm. um, or the gift of teaching, which we see present in so many of our people, the gift of the evangelist, which is that person who's always like, hey, you gotta try this, or we just went to the new restaurant, we're so excited about it, you gotta try it, or the the gift of the shepherd. Uh, I like I like what the, the shepherd gifting, uh, for me, it's like the mom of the group, mm-hmm. you know, that person that's always got Band-Aids in their, in their <laughs> purse, right? Um, the one who's always telling you that you've had enough when it comes to whatever you're doing, whether mm-hmm. that's a, uh, enough food or whatever. Um, but all those giftings are present and active in the church when the church is the healthiest, they're all moving forward. And, and you know, the, mm-hmm. the person who's gifted in the shepherding is, is shepherding and, and making sure they're looking after. And the person who's gifted in the prophetics and is that person that kind of leans in on the truth and wants to make sure that the church is living in its fullness of the truth. Uh, so all those gifts working in concert with each other paints a healthy picture of who Jesus is to the community. Yeah. To kind of take an illustration from last week, it really makes me think of how you talked about soccer and how for a long time we as the church have thought of ourselves as spectators who like, we'll buy all the gear and we'll do our part to yell and cheer and support the team. But the reality is that we are all on the field and everyone on the field has a role to play, but you don't, you don't want the goalie out there doing whatever non-goalies do. Sorry, my <laughs> soccer knowledge has ended at but this you point. you really tried. That's great. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Football. Football. Or football. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But that's kind of what this reminds me of, this idea of we all have a role to play because we're all engaged. None of us are just in the stands watching. Yeah, and unfortunately with with the elevating of some gifts over others, there's been like a a competitive nature that has stepped into the church collectively. But really, the picture I believe that's healthy, that's painted in Ephesians 4, is really the picture of when shepherds do what shepherds get to do, and prophets do what prophets get to do, and evangelists, and that that gifting of an evangelist, they get to do what what they're gifted in doing. Ultimately, because Jesus is the ultimate apostle, and is the ultimate shepherd, and is the ultimate evangelist, Ultimately, when we're doing what we need to do, we paint a full picture of Jesus. I think it, along that line of thinking, we, we have not seen a full picture of Jesus. And it's really detrimental to the, 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 the kingdom of God moving forward in mm-hmm. our city. They need to see a full picture. They need to see somebody who's loving and shepherding and teaching and prophetic and, um, and has that, that idea, nature to them. It, it's important that they see the whole picture. Yeah, so 
We don't have time to deep dive into every single type of gift, but just kind of on a surface level, let's just walk through the five giftings and give a brief like, this might be you if kind of thing. So we'll start with the A in Apest, the apostolic gift. Yeah, so the, the gifting, uh, the apostolic gifting, uh, really, you, if you're an entrepreneur, this might be you. Mm -hmm. If you have an idea, kind of every minute. If you're the type of person that when you consider the losslessness of a city or of your, your neighborhood or of your job, you're thinking of creative ideas in order to engage the gospel in some of those circles, mm -hmm. you, might be, you might have the gifting of an apostle. Mm -hmm. Almost feel like this is throwing it way back, but you know the Jeff Fox where they like you might be a redneck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So moving on, you might be a prophet with prophetic gifting. If well, the prophetic gifting is a unique one. Uh, if you are a truth teller, mm -hmm. if you are the type of person that's like truth above all, you know there's some negative sides to some of these giftings if we're not careful. There's mm -hmm. there's a point where you know th this could be detrimental too many prophets in the house, too many people in, in, you know, utilizing that gift of the prophet without enough shepherds and the church is really coarse and harsh, but we need that prophetic gifting to move us forward. So you might be a, a prophet if um, you're the type of person that's like a truth teller or mm -hmm. uh, a person who just, just has that if it's... And prophets tend to see things in black and white, yes. right? Like people with that gifting, I know because I tend to <laughs> move in that direction. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> um, but if you could never see a reason for someone to park in a handicap unless they're <laughs> actually handicapped... Do you're not probably get me started. <laughs> if you have really strong conversations with people in the car as you drive down the road, <laughs> even though they're not in the car with you... you you might just need to pray for it. <laughs> so guys, welcome to this counseling session. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah. It's getting a little bit uncomfortable to the gift of the evangelist. What yes. does that look like? So if you're a fan, if you're a super fan, mm -hmm. if um, you're the type of person that can't wait to tell people that you've discovered something new, there's a really good chance that you're in the, uh, you have the giftings of an evangelist, which is it's critical. Like again, we need all of these people. Mm -hmm. and, you know, what I love about fans uh, and, or the gift of the evangelist is it's, it's something exciting all the time, and it's mm -hmm. the best of, you know. Oh, I went to this restaurant. It's the best <laughs> taco you've ever had in your life. Well, I mean, it's a good taco, but I've had some good tacos, and there's going to be another restaurant that comes a couple weeks mm -hmm. later that's going to have the best tacos you've ever had. But that, that might, you, you might be an evangelist. Yeah, I like that because that's one of those words that we have this kind of title that we think of in the church as the evangelist. And you think of like a Billy Graham yeah. or like a traveling preacher, but the reality is that you can, you can live in one place and not ever get on a stage and be an evangelist. If you are that cheerleader, kind of that like, I can't wait to tell people I found this deal in the target dollar spot yeah. so they can get it too, like that kind of personality. Well, and I'm gonna tell you the world as a whole has grabbed a hold of this term. Like, there are product evangelists in some of the top Fortune 500 companies. It has nothing to do with the church or God or the gospel. It's just they understand that an evangelist is a herald or someone who just can't wait to tell people what they've mm -hmm. discovered. Yeah, cool. I, I wish we had like 30 minutes for each of these, but moving on to the shepherd. Yes. So shepherd, you are the caretaker. Um, again, trying to give a balanced picture here. Uh, shepherds are the ones that are quick to run to the person who has the scrape knee. Mm -hmm. You are the person who maybe uh, in a church setting, if, if somebody's in prayer, you want to go and pray with them. Uh, mm -hmm. You're the huggers or, you know, just making sure people are all right. Um, just from a little bit of a negative slant, if you feel like you need to be needed, mm -hmm. there may be the gifting of the shepherd in you. And it's one that you kind of got to be a little careful of. But with that said, again, every one of these gifts are critical. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, the teacher. Yeah, well, I mean, again, teachers teach. Mm -hmm. So if you are the type that can't wait to impart new information, there's a really good chance you're a teacher. I think that's another one that's not necessarily even in the church, but because teachers it's a job that so many people have. You might think that because your profession is to teach, you are, this gifting must be the one that is of you, or you might think that if you're not a teacher, that doesn't apply to you. But really, you can be in any profess profession and be a gifted teacher. Yeah, that gifting of the teacher could be in you. And it's mm -hmm. just the way, um, what, I, what I'm really careful to do, um, and we talked a little bit about this Sunday, 
I'm really careful to remind people that because you're gifted in one area doesn't mean you get to ignore the rest. A prophet or a person who's gifted in the prophetic uh, uh, without the, the balance of understanding at least what a shepherd or what a shepherd's gifting is mm -hmm. can, uh, can be untethered and it's ugly and yeah. it, can be, it, it could be dangerous. Um, um, the person who is a, has the giftings of a shepherd and, and is that mom of the group if you totally get your validation based off of whether people need you or not, instead of understanding the truth of God's word and balancing it out, again, you need that gifting, some of that gifting of a prophet in order to kind of balance out your shepherd, um, your shepherd gifting. It doesn't give you an excuse to be a jerk because you're a prophet or to be absent-minded because you're an idea guy. Mm -hmm. Like that, it, there has to be a balance. Yeah, yeah. So... Next week, where are we headed now that we've done giftings? So we're, mult, uh, we're moving in um, giftings, and then we are moving to generosity. That's so it is the engine by which the mm -hmm. church moves forward. And it's, you know, people hear the word generosity, and they instantly think finances, but we give this church in particular, Center City, they, people give so much. They give mm -hmm. of their time, they give of their giftings, but they also give of their finances. Yeah, oh, I'm excited because yeah. being generous is joyful. Like, I love Absolutely. that there's the opportunity to really put that in our DNA and, and create that culture of generosity here. Well, it's already if, here, really, yeah. but and to if, continue it. If we're being true to what we talked about two weeks ago with the cornerstone of Jesus, um, that in essence means that Jesus was giving. Like, at the core, the mm -hmm. passage we all remember is God so loved the world, he did what? gave that generosity is one that we should then extend to other people that God loved the world so much that his children give needs to be a perspective that we walk with yeah I'm excited so yeah. guys be here Sunday at 10 don't forget we have family dinner tonight this is the first night we're breaking out into our groups yes it's gonna can't be great. wait it's gonna be awesome um, you want to give a quick preview of the groups that they can break out into yeah yeah so we're gonna have three groups for adults of course the kids will all have groups youth group will be meeting we will have a women's group and a men's group the men are talking about they're going through kind of a discipleship program and what it looks like to be a disciple which is convenient since yeah, we're talking absolutely. about making disciples and the women are going to be talking about hospitality and looking at the way jesus and his ministry used hospitality around a table which is also really exciting and then my personal favorite, because I'm very biased and I'm in this group and leading it, we are going to have a freedom group that is for anyone, male or female, in our church who has not gone through our freedom curriculum yet. We really believe that a lot of people can choose to give their life to Jesus and follow him, but then they pick up these chains and just keep carrying them around when we're really created to be free. So we're gonna spend the whole semester going through that freedom curriculum. I cannot wait. Can't wait. So hopefully you will see you there. Thank <laughs> you.